series talking all things soccer across North Jersey. This is season three, episode eight, and we have a lot to talk about because we got championships to play for. We have championships already played for. We have state tournament brackets just released, and we're going to talk all about it. I am Corey Doviak, being joined by my panel of experts, starting with former Cliffside Park head coach, Bergen County Boys Soccer Tournament Championship head coach, Jimmy Fusey. What's going on, Jimmy? Uh, Best time of the year, fellas. World Series, tournament brackets, and county finals. Yeah, I mean, really, you got everything going on yeah. here. Uh, I was out and about watching a bunch of stuff, as was our other resident expert here, NorthJerseySports.com soccer insider, Richie Ballgame Barton. What's up, Richie B? Not much. Basically doing the same thing Jimmy's doing, but with a little more excitement. <laughs> <laughs> well, just for, for uh, both of you here, turn your eyes away from the – New York Mets playing in the World Series and focus your attention for the, you know, the next hour or so here on the task at hand, which is talking soccer, because we have a lot to get to for sure. Tonight on the show, we're going to wrap up the Bergen County girls tournament semifinals. We will also preview the final and we will do so with IHA head coach, Brandon Silva will join us. We will do the same for the Bergen County boys soccer tournament uh, we'll preview the final and look back at the semifinals. Steve Every, the head coach of the Northern Highland Highlanders, uh, they came out on the short end of a 4-3 score, but it was a great game. He's going to join us tonight. We'll talk a little bit about that classic matchup with Tenafly. We'll also ask him a little bit about the state tournament and get the story behind Northern Highlands this year because it is an interesting one. Uh, a perennially strong program who lost about just about everybody to graduation. Steve came in as the new head coach from Indian Hills and has done a great job with the Highlanders. So that one loss notwithstanding, they are the top seed in the newly released uh, North 1 Group 3 State Sectional Tournament bracket. That's going to be fun. But we have huge news to get to, and that requires this. Jimmy, what? let me ask you this. I mean, you're a guy who's won a ton of awards. You've been inducted into many halls of fame, including uh, very shortly going to be in, in, inducted into the Cliffside Park High School Hall of Fame. Now, The Bergen County Coaches Association, this is hot off the presses, this is huge news, has just named its list of award winners for this year's banquet, which will be held in late November down at the Fiesta. And our very own Corey K. Doviak, meaning myself, has been named the, I have to ask you, it says Prestigious Contributor Award. Now, does that mean I'm a prestigious contributor, or does that mean that the award is prestigious? Maybe a little bit of both. Maybe a little <laughs> bit of both, man. Oh, congrats. Yeah. Man. I'm just so excited. I've never been a prestigious contributor award. And you know what's great about it is that Richie Ballgame Barton is not a prescri- prestigious contributor. What's, Richie, how does that What's the feel? opposite of being uh, prestigious? <laughs> Richie, Richie, does he have to sit on this? What did, what did he contribute? Yeah, a, oh, picture, God. a picture did, once in a while? Or what, 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 what have you brought to the ball? Richie, what has he brought to the ball game, Richie? Uh, he doesn't bring to the party. He'll bring some to the party, Richie B. Richie B brings the party <laughs> to the party. Listen, I've been to parties with Richie B, and he's absolutely right when he says that. All right, get it, let's get back to me. This is all about me here. I'm the, pres- I'm the prestigious contributor. Now, yeah. Jimmy, I, I got the the uh, form, you know, that invites yeah, me or yeah. whatever. I got to pay for those. I got to pay for those tickets. No, I, I think, go for no, I think you're comp. You and your wife are comp. Really? A free dinner? Now we're talking here. Yeah, Woohoo! Yeah, at the Fiesta, no less. So. Good. Now, okay, and my last question on the fact, uh, on this unbelievable honor that I have received. I mean, it really has changed my entire life. I'm having T-shirts made up and, and everything. But uh, do I give a an acceptance you have speech? To, yes, sir. Lengthy one at that too. And, and is is it bigger than the what 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 did you give me a couple of years right. ago? The North Jersey Media Man of the big Year. Big difference. Big difference. Big difference. Okay. The media one, uh, which the media better? one had about fifteen hundred people there, and I don't think anybody heard you or me speak. Um, so it's more like a, a, a meat factory. Let's just push it through. Let's just get people out. This is a little more intimate. Bergen County. So this is a better oh, award. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, now absolutely. even more said. And and is it better than the president's award I won 
from the Bergen County Coaches Association in 2006. Two different organizations. Last thing, do I have to put my handprint somewhere in the Fiesta? You know, by that little bridge where the waterfall no, goes? No, but, Did... but you might have to wear a shirt and tie. <laughs> oh, forget it. I ain't coming. Oh, uh, that ended that fun. Anyway, I I I, shave, <laughs> I politely decline. Or shave, or maybe I even pol- comb your hair. So I mean, it's a big deal. <laughs> I'm going to have to politely decline the invitation. Thank you for the sentiment, though, Bergen County soccer coaches of uh, of America. All right. <laughs> Quickly, before we get to our guests tonight, let's uh, wrap up the Passaic County Soccer Championships. And, Richie B., when I said quickly, I mean quickly. Uh, We're going to talk about them briefly. Then we'll get back and mention again that I am a prestigious contributor. And then we're going to get to Brandon Silva. So, boys' side, historic victory for Hawthorne Christian Academy. Their first ever county championship in any sport give us a quick rundown of their win over wayne valley no doubt about it they've had uh they've had a great year i mean they have one of the best one two offensive you know punch combinations in uh in rennie white up top who's leading north jersey in uh in goals i think he has what 39 now or something like that and will woodfin uh center this young who just does a little bit of everything they were they were locked in a tight battle with wayne valley wayne valley pulled uh you know was it three consecutive upsets on the road just to get to the final? Wayne Valley played tough. They played tough. They uh, spread the field wide and uh, gave Hawthorne Christian some problems. But as the game went on, it was 1 1 late in the second half. Hawthorne Christian started to wear him down. And on set pieces, Wayne Valley was double and triple cover in white because he's dangerous in the air. Outside midfielder Colin Callahan sneaks on the backside of throwing bounces, which would make any coach you know, in the defensive third. If you see a throw and bounce, uh, look, because you're probably getting taken out very soon. Anyway, bounces in the box. Colin Callahan sneaks in the backside, heads it in 208 to play. Also Christian, first county title 2-1, great game. That was brief, and that was well done, Richie B. Now take us over to the girls' side where Wayne Hills won again. And I, I, I retweeted something the other day. Well, first of all, I should mention that if you want to follow us on Twitter, it is at NJSCOM because that is where you can get all this kind of great information. Uh, Wayne Hills have an unbelievable spring in many different sports, and that includes the Wayne Hills girls soccer team, which did what, Richie, in the Passaic County final? Uh, speaking of 2-1 wins, Wayne Hills, 2-1 over Clifton. It was uh, uh, Wayne Hills pretty much kind of controlled the first half, um, at least that's the way I saw it. Uh, John Caparuzio. They had, they connected a couple passes. Caparuzio uh, buried one to make it one nothing at the half. Clifton comes out. Clifton comes out early in the second half and uh, kind of set a tone. Daniello Robu hit a great left footed strike yeah, from 30 yards out from like almost by the sideline, right into the upper corner. Great shot. Ties it at one. Uh, teams went back and forth, but Megan uh, Megan Griffin from Wayne Hills, she is she's awesome. She's just an absolute workhorse, you know, the type of kid that just never stops running. And eventually, you know, you give her space and she's going to put a shot on target. And she put a great one on. Um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Lene Copan. That's who it was. You know, sent the ball into space. Griffin got her body around the ball. You know, she's making a diagonal run. The ball's rolling. She was able to get her body around the ball and just ripped one into the upper left-hand corner from about 25. Uh, to make it 2-1, and that's the way it stood. Wayne Hills, and they're going to be a tough out in Northland Group 3, too. I mean, I know they're in 2 seed, but I think they get slighted a lot because they don't play the competition that uh, some of the Bergen County teams play, but uh, make no mistake, they're good. They're, they're, I think they're going to get to the final. Jimmy, don't you think that was an ex- excellent contribution by Richie? I, honestly, I think Richie is the man, honestly, on the show. On your website, I think he needs a raise. I think you should. And in life, you, should, uh, you know, he, he's he's been he's been your Robin for a long time. I think he needs to step into that Batman role once in a while, man. And he did tonight, obviously. No, you know what you know what happens. You know what happens when you let the sidekick run the show. Look at him, Richie. He's over there. He's so excited now because you I'm just said that. For Richie. But let me just let me just tell you something. When the sidekick Tonto would not be Tonto without the Lone Ranger. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you let the sidekick run the show, things start to go so, yeah, how, many, but, how do you know? 
They give me and the you don't. You don't know, Rich. I'm on your side, man. Well, Let's because, start our own podcast. Because where, where's Tonto now? Where's Tonto <laughs> that's now? Like, that's like Raj and Rerun on what's happening. You know, Raj and Rerun <laughs> and Tonto all together. Everyone hangs out at the house. But you let Rerun shine, all of a sudden he's dancing, taking over. <laughs> Richie, I was going to say something nice about you because in my newfound, with the newfound lofty status that I have as a prestigious contributor <laughs> to the Bergen County Soccer Coaches Association, I would like to nominate you next year for Bergen County Soccer Coaches Association prestigious okay. contributor award. And listen, I think you have a real chance. I mean, no, from no, the way you. the votes were, how about that? The way the votes no, were tallied, no, I feel you. like no, thank you. I don't play second fiddle. All right, there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like Richie, I had to, I don't think you get it. I had to beat out Ed Mills to win this award. And that's not easy to do. Well, that's all over the place. <laughs> you know, I mean he actually goes all over Burton County. You can't you can't get south of Oradell. <laughs> all right, enough of this foolishness. Let's welcome in our first guest of the evening joining us on the Moe's Southwest Grill Hotline. Let's talk a little bit of Bergen County. Girls Soccer Tournament semifinals and finals will do it with Brandon Silva, IHA head coach. Brand, thanks for joining us here on Hitting the Post. My pleasure, guys. Always a pleasure. Yeah, well, it's great to have you at an uh, exciting time of the season. And even though you, you I, I apologize in advance for you having to deal with my two cranky co-hosts who are itchy to go watch the, the World Series games, we're going to keep this to girls soccer here because – uh, listen, I was there in the semifinals against Rampo, and, you know, explain it from your point of view, because I, I thought it was an interesting chess match. I mean, Rampo was trying to be destructive. Uh, I think they did a good job of being constructive, and you guys had a couple of moments of brilliance, including the goal you scored in regulation. You know, uh, you know, talk about that game and getting through it. Again, uh, being the fourth year we've played, we've had the pleasure of playing Rampo in the county semifinal. Um, you, you couldn't have said it better. I mean, really, it was a very, uh, very kind of disruptive match. So not a lot of soccer played, which is not really our style, but we had to kind of result to it only because um, our opponent, traditionally a very good program, organized team, um, really gave us a tough time to try to play the kind of soccer game that we traditionally like to play. So um, it was a very exciting match as you, as you guys, as you were there. So. What can I say? I mean, it was. Um, it, I thought it ended the way it, it should have. I thought we were the better team, to be honest. But uh, and again, again, it was a very, very good soccer game. And uh, and kudos to Rampo for for really putting up an awesome fight. Yeah, and after after the game, when I interviewed you, uh, you, I thought you did a great job of putting it into words exactly what happened on your goal because, you know, it it, it was that weird transition. You know, they're trying to play a high line, you're trying to stay on side, and you kind of. Met in the middle, Shannon Burns sends the great ball into Julius Schreckgast, and and it wound up in a you know a really pretty goal. But just you know, Rampo plays that high line. You girls have to try to be careful. Uh, bec- you didn't get caught off sides much in the game, but that was through conscious effort more than anything else. Yeah, again, um, they they talked a lot about the the the, fan, the four players that play for Rampo and there in the back and the defense that Paul's been working so very hard at, and then was you know it, watching some film and going to watch them play. I guess on the Highlands, it was kind of an interesting um, back line to see how high they push, and we had to kind of play a little more direct in a very indirect style of play um, that we try to preach. And as you could see, the first goal that we scored, really the only score, the only goal we scored in regulation, uh, was from a direct style of play. So again, we had to kind of play and, and, and fall into what they, what they, their style of play was like, which was very uncomfortable for us. But again, it is what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Richie B. Yeah, uh, I mean, I haven't seen you since uh, your opener against Maria Carrillo out in California. Lost 4-2, and when we talked after that game, I mean, you saw the defensive holes that you ha- that you had early on, and it seems you've really shored that up. What, you know, what has made that transition work for where you seem? I I, I don't want to say unorganized because that's not the right word, but. Um, you know, you just you just made a couple of mistakes and they all cost you in the back. What did you say to them, or did something click at some point in the season that you know? Because really, it seems like you're clicking on all cylinders, but especially in the defensive third. Yeah, I mean, again, it was it was such a tough, it was such an interesting situation when we organized this uh, this this event with a team from California. I'll never, nor will I ever be the kind of guy that's going to turn down great competition, um, no matter what it is, because we always try to find good games, and I'm not going to be scared to lose, especially our team. 
because um, we're going to learn from our mistakes. But certainly a learning a learning curve and a learning process. Uh, having Shannon, um, our captain, not playing center back that game, uh, and Katie Samaro, who is our junior, just switching them. The very the very simple switch um, that we've made has made a dramatic difference. With no disrespect to Katie, because um, she'll have to probably play that role next year. But Shannon just being a huge presence and a and a facilitator and a coach from the back really helped us grow within our within our shape uh, over the course of the year. So just making that little change, um, I think, helped dramatically. And, you know, of course, you kind of wish you did it earlier in the season, but it's, it's a learning process again, and every year is going to be different. So that, that's, I think that's what's really helped us um, from, like you said, from being a little unorganized, which I appreciate you, you're 100% right, to being a lot more organized. You appreciate Rich Barton? There's a first on NorthJerseySports.com. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, go ahead. Prove how much, how little you know about girls' soccer. Go ahead. Corey, I, man, I, I love you, man. I really do. I love you. I love you. I love you, Coach. You know, yes. It's great this time of year because I, I think the model of this time of year is just live to play another day. Uh, you talk about right. around po game a little bit, how it was more uncharacteristic of your play, a little more direct. Uh, then balance, but at the end of the day, you know, hey, listen, let's get the W, let's regroup, let's let's live to play another day, and 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 let's try to create some kind of balance in our attack. Uh, what do you have to do on Saturday to exactly do that to create a balanced attack? What do you have to do in order to create opportunities and balanced opportunities against the strong Northern Highlands team? Well, I could tell you that you know, watching again, uh, doing my homework, failing to prepare is preparing for failure. I tell the kids the same thing, and I told them that. Come, come Saturday and we're walking down those stairs at Indian Hills, I can look them straight in the face and say, as their coach, as their leader, as their facilitator, I'll do whatever I can and do whatever it's going to take to make sure that I'm prepared and I'm preparing them and the rest is up to them. And I can tell you that so far this week at practice has been nothing but short of excellent, phenomenal, inspiring. We've had a great week of practice. We are hungry. And uh, I think that going into this Saturday, what, what, a, Mon- what a, a team like Nona Hounds hasn't seen has a lot of teams that have attacked on them outside of Montclair. Montclair kind of went at them a little bit and exposed them in the first half, and it's because they didn't sit back against them. They kind of went at them, and, you know, of course, the result was a result, but um, we're, we're, we're going to play the game like we know how to play the game, and the result will be the result. Um, I'm not going to be the team, and they're not going to want to be the team as far as my group to sit back with 10 players behind the 30 and to try to win a county championship. We've been there and done that. Uh, we'll feel much better about playing good soccer and uh, and going forward and and so we're we're excited about the opportunity again. It, it's, again, this is the fourth year I've been a part of the program, and this is the fourth year that we've met them in the finals, and also the fourth year fourth year we played Rampo. And I think that has a lot to say with our our soccer up in our area here. I think it's really it's truly phenomenal about the kind of soccer that's played. Yeah, no, it's crazy because you're going to go off after this and be the you know favorite in non-public A. Uh, Highlands will go off and be the favorite in Group 3, and Ramapo will go off and be one of the favorites in Group 2. All of you made state finals last year. So, you know, uh, with uh, you and uh, Highlands winning it. So uh, the, I guess the one question I have further about the county final is, do you expect to be fully healthy? I mean, uh, there is one major weapon that you were playing without, and that shouldn't be uh, underestimated against Rampo. When you're playing without Rebecca Jarrett, I mean, she's got – the kind of speed that can stretch a defense in any direction. And we're not going to have her. We're just unfortunately not going to have her. She's not going to be healthy for the game, um, which is, of course, yeah, it always hurts, um, well, it, especially having her not being able to play. But, again, having a player of her caliber on our team, uh, you know, of course, going off to California and playing with the national team, um, there's, so many, there's so many more tools in our toolbox that I think that we are going to really embrace the moment I think that players that you saw against Rampo, uh, the likes of Sophia Galati, Aaron Spillane, Shannon Burns, Juliana Shrekass, which was a huge weapon in that game, um, really put a stamp on that game. I think you're going to see some different moments and, um, and, and, different, and different moments of excellence, certainly. And Again, we're going to play with the cards we're dealt with and do the best we can. Not having Rebecca, maybe having her for the state playoffs would be nice, but we're planning not to have her, and we've done thus far. Yeah. All right. That answers that question. Richie B, you got another one? Yeah. I mean, t- is there a different mindset coming into this year's game as a, against Highlands as opposed to last year's game? Last year, um, 
you know, despite being undefeated, you almost came in, uh, you know, there was a lot of pressure. There was a lot of pressure. And now with Jarrett being out, with Highlands playing as well as they played, you know, is it nice to go into a game as, as you know, kind of an underdog? It, I got to tell you, again, it's, it's, it's just like last year again. You know, last year you come into this game, you're playing against an opponent that's got 88 games in a row. Um, they're et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're coming into the game last year with a certain record, and and we go ahead and we, we do our thing, and then we end up winning the States, and we end up winning, uh, getting number one in the country, whatever that means. And then we move on to this year, and we approach this year, and really nothing is what's said. There was no monument built after us. There was no parade down uh, Main Street in Washington Township. It was just we, we ended this year, and nothing was really said. So And then nothing kind of happened, and what happens again? Northern Highlands is number one on top, and they're getting all the press, and we're kind of just sitting in our beautiful field in the back of our, our school just kind of waiting for the opportunity again. And we kind of like that because really the, it's kind of the quiet giant. We're just kind of anticipating this awesome moment with a big, big crowd. And uh, you know, like we said today in practice, we're going to do the best we can. We're going to prepare as best we can. And I think that we're going to, we're going to give them a pretty good game. I think we have them pretty figured out, at least like I think we, we do. And um, – we kind of like that. We don't like the pressure of, of, of having this, you know, I, I do think we're the team that can beat them. I will say that going into the States. If you look at the way the States lined up at Northern Highlands, the way they are, they have some monsters really all over the field. I mean, look at, look at their roster. They're, they're definitely very strong this year, but, and you look at the South and their group and what they're coming out of this group, they, they should really kind of cruise along in the state playoffs. But I would argue that we are the only group that really can, can stand toe to toe with them and give them a difficult time, and I hope we do that. Yeah, is there a Main Street in Washington Township? <laughs> it, it, run, it runs right through, right past IHA. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And we, and we had right. a little parade. That was we had a little parade, and then we were done. <laughs> That's actually not true, but. <laughs> right. Have you? You know, it's a, it's a weird thing because I, I talked to Paul Heenahan after your game, uh, and I, I talked to you know a, a couple conversations that I've had this year. And he's like, you know, at some point we have to remind ourselves that we're still a, a good soccer team. This is speaking from the Rampos perspective because they beat everybody else. They lose to IHA and they lose to Highlands over the last five years. That's, you know, and they beat everybody else. You know, they got to a state final last year. And he has to tell his team, like, you know what? <laughs> we're measuring ourselves against two of the best teams in the country, and uh, we are still pretty good. This year, people see on your record that you have three losses. Granted, none of them are against New Jersey opponents. Uh, do you have to tell your kids? Uh, is it is something that you – I don't think IHA kids ever lack for confidence because that's why they go there because they think they're on that level. So I think an ingrained confidence is part of wanting to go play for a program like yours. But have you had to say to them, like, you know, hey, we're still pretty good here, even if this year they're number one in the nation, uh, myth- mythically, obviously, uh, and, you know, people aren't talking about us in that circle as they did last year. Yeah, I mean, again, we, we, we've, had, we've had a lot more downs than we've had ups with regards to the way that we want to play the game, but still getting the result in regards to a W since we've had those losses against Somers, McDonough, and Maria Carrillo. But if you look at those games, again, we missed a PK, McDonough, um, and that coach will we'll continue that relationship. We'll go down there to Maryland next year. A real great coach, good guy. And that game could have went either way. Somers, we outshoot them 23-3. to We lose off a penalty kick. Game could have went either way. The coach says it was a pleasure to play you. I mean, again, these are all building things. Teams coming off, the team's coming off the field crying. We're getting it. And then we step on the field. We're playing Fairlawn in the quarterfinal or the, the round of 16. And they, they, they start to push us a little bit. We empty our bench. I mean, again, the game, again, the game is just it's, it's been a crazy year. Wayne Valley comes in our – home field and gives us a really difficult time, we persevere, fight back, and win the game. And people are looking at that score going, how does that team only beat Wayne Valley 3-2? Well, right. you know, if you're there, you might think something different. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to make excuses, but, again, we push through, we push through. It's been a year really trying to figure ourselves out, and I think the most important thing I say to our group is that we're figuring it out at the right time. Like, right now is the time that we got to figure it out, and we're figuring it out, and, um, and, and we have a great thing going. I think that we – have our 15, 16 kids that are going to do the thing we need to do as far as moving on to the stages that we need to follow and play on November 15th at the King University. That would be our plan. But every year is different. It's just a, it's an exciting thing. It's the challenges of it. I mean, I'm not, again, it's not coach-centered. It's player-centered. 
Um, as long as we leave our program with a strong character and I get invited back to their weddings, I, I, we, win, <laughs> we win a championship every year as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that's a great point. Jimmy, do you have anything else to add? You know, you, you mentioned it is, it is a player's game. Uh, you know, your, your work comes during the week. And whatever happens during the game happens during the game. It's a player's game. It's a creative game by the players. Um, and I think as a coach, that's the frustrating point. As, as the World Series is on now and, and the, it's football season, unlike those two games where coaches really have an impact on game day, in soccer, as a coach, all you have to do is sit back and, and, and let the girls or the boys you know, play to what you guys have built up all season. So mm-hmm. I don't have a question, but coach, good luck, man. And, uh, you know, try to stay healthy and, and, and try to, you know, do what you guys can do, man. No, we, we, we certainly hope to do that. We really do. But again, if we don't, uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of great things that happened from the season that you could take away from. And again, like we won the, we won what you win last year, but look, we are this year, you know, we're, it's a whole nother year and no one really cares what happened last year. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you had Highlands that won 88 games in a row. I mean, think about it, 88 games in a row. It's a very difficult thing to do. And it kind of comes up every once in a while. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Honestly. Yeah. So really what it's about. I mean, it's about their experience. Every year you try to make the kids better, try to make them the good human being, you know, person first, player second. And you move on. Yeah. That's it's great. awesome. Brandon Silva, the head coach of the IHA Blue Eagles, will be playing for a, Bergen, a second straight. Bergen County Championship this Saturday, 1 o'clock at Indian Hills. We thank you for joining us here on Hitting the Post, uh, especially considering how are the little ones? Twins. Brandon's got twins, a couple months old only. Sleeping six hours now, uh, but, you know, up at Daddy in the morning watching film, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Brand, thanks for joining us, man. Good luck on Saturday, and uh, either Rich Barton or myself will be there to see the whole thing happen. You, you guys are the best. Have a great rest of your evening. Go, go Matt. All right, switching gears from the Bergen County Girls Soccer Tournament, moving on to the Bergen County Boys Soccer Tournament. We're going to talk all about the semifinals and beyond. Joining us now on the Moe's Southwest Grill Hotline is Jim Fusey's favorite coach in Bergen County. He is Northern Highland Steve Every. Steve, thanks for joining us here on Hitting the Post. Thanks, guys, for having me. I'm going to turn you right over to Jimmy. I mean, Jimmy, why do you get so excited when I mention Steve Every coming on the show? This yes. is your show. You're the contributor. Why don't you ask the first question? Yeah, and that's true. I, 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 You know, getting back to last week when we had Steve Grenz on and you asked him if his team was better when his two best players were hurt, I think that's probably a good idea <laughs> that, that I handled the first question. All right, Steve, so – uh, getting to the uh, Bergen County semifinals against Tenafly, first of all, from my perspective, because I have no dog in the hunt and I don't care who wins or loses, that was a great soccer game to watch. I mean, it was fun. Nobody uh, nobody was not, I don't want to say not paying attention to defense, but people were trying to score goals in that game. Uh, 4-3 final, and you guys came up on the short end of the stick. But just talk about the way your guys played, because it, it really was a brilliant performance and it could have gone either way. Uh, well, thanks. I mean, you know, <clears throat> we, uh, you know, we, we try and play some good soccer, you know, we try and knock the ball around, we try and get everybody involved, you know, not keep a lot of guys back, uh, you know, predominantly and, and, uh, you know, try and attack the goal. And I think that, uh, yeah, looking at the game, I thought we had a, we played a very good game. We just came up, uh, short, and, you know, credit Tenafly for having a, you know, great finish in overtime. But, uh, uh, you know, I was happy with the way we played other than, you know, the result, but that's soccer. Yes, no, absolutely, and and even you, you said in the interview that I did with you after too, you, not that you wanted to lose, but to lose on a goal like that, you know, a diving header in the second overtime, uh, you, you you can't really do anything but tip your cap. But uh, Jimmy, go ahead, uh, Coach. First off, congratulations on your success this year. I mean, you've been doing it, and you've been around Bergen County for long enough, man. It's nice to see you uh, in a situation um, to really move forward. And, uh, you know, you're one of the good guys out there that's good for our sport, that's good for high school sports. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're, you know, you're moving forward with the Highlands team because uh, it's good not only for high school sports, for yourself, but the kids at Highlands. So congrats. Well, Jimmy, thank you very much. Appreciate you're it. You're welcome. You're welcome. But taking over this Highlands team um, and only returning one goal from last season, um, talk to me a little bit about, you know, how, how this team, you know, got to where they are today. Number one seed, North one, Group three, um, county semifinals. You know, you, last year Highlands was decimated by graduation. Um, 
what happened? What happened in the summer? What happened up until today that your team is in a situation to compete not only for a county title, uh, but also a state sectional title? Well, you know, I mean, the cover was definitely bare when you when you return, a, you know, in terms of returning players that had participated in, a, you know, to a large extent to success, you know, to the success of the program. You know, losing 11 starters is not easy. Um, but, you know, the guys that were there, you know, were very good players, just never had a chance to get in there. Um, you know, Sean uh, DeVore, the old coach, who had a lot of success, uh, you know, played a kind of a short bench and trusted the guys that he had trust in and, and um, you know, did fantastic. But, uh, you know, leaving these guys with not a lot of playing time, but just because they didn't play, I mean, the biggest thing they didn't have uh, was experience. And, you know, in the beginning of the year, two things I knew that we had to do was one is I had to learn everybody's name and how to pronounce it the right way because they kept on busting me about that. And, the other and you know what? They're not all easy ones on that roster either, by the way. No, no. I mean, it's easier than maybe coaching in Garfield or something like that, but or Cliffside Park. Right. But, you know, yep. you know, there's still a few twisters there. Um, and the other thing was, you know, um, getting experience. You know, and we started the season off 2-0, and and then we had our first game against Rampo. And, you know, these kids are, you know, they all have the success gene, so to speak, uh, of of winning and being a part of the winning. They just haven't been the guys that have actually been doing it. And, you know, the first game against Rampo, I said to my assistant, I said, it'll be an interesting first half to see how we will do because, you know, they've never been actually on the field. They've been there watching. They've been there close. They've been prepped for it, but they've never actually been the guys, you know. So we were down 2 nothing in the first half on a couple of mistakes and really didn't play our, our, our best. I think that we were a little bit, you know, blinded by the spotlight. And then we talked at halftime, made a couple of adjustments. And the second half, you know, to their, uh, you know, credit, they came out blazing. And, you know, we hit the post three or four times, a crossbar, they had a couple of saves off the goal line. And, you know, we wound up losing 2 nothing, but, you know, we showed fight and we showed, hey, you know what, we can play with anybody. And from there, we've just kind of, you know, kept kept going, and they've always had a great belief in uh, who they are, and you know it, they work hard. Um, the other thing that we we did was we changed, you know, a lot of the way they play. They played more of a direct style. Um, I think now we're trying to possess the ball a little more and and you know doing more creative things. They had some great athletes up front last year, and they just want to get in the ball as soon as possible and let them take their chances. And we try and work it around and get everybody involved and. Uh, come at you a different way. So, you know, between learning the kids' names and, and changing our styles, what, you know, once that all uh, implemented, then the long game for some experience, now here we are. Now, did I just filibuster for 10 minutes or what? How great is that, though? That's exactly what we wanted because I thought you gave a, a great answer to the question. And it also leads into the other part of it is, you know, it's one thing – you know, you look at around, Poe, you look at what Sean DeVore had before in Northern Highlands. It's one thing if you're in the program and you know those kids. Like, you know, Sean got to see <clears throat> what he had coming up every day in practice. You coming I, – I think the, the – really the unique part of the story is that you were coming in cold, you know, a long time, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears you poured into the Indian Hills program. Uh, and then you move over to Northern Highlands, and you're starting fresh to a new – you know, administration, new kids, new everything. I mean, not a new league, and not that you didn't know the the Bergen County soccer landscape, but it, it not, and, and I don't mean to disparage Indian Hills at all, because when you had players, you did as well as you could with them. When you didn't have maybe the, the level of talent, you did as well as you could with them. But, you know, for you personally, you know, Highlands is a whole different kettle of fish. This is a, a team, a program, you look at what the girls' soccer team does, that ha- has the ability, one, but also the belief that they're going to win every year. So talk about that transition for you. Yeah, no, it, it definitely, um, you know, you're definitely stepping into, you know, one of the you know, traditionally, you know, top, uh, you know, five, six programs in Burton County. Um, it's sometimes, I don't know, sometimes you can't always describe it. It's just a different feel. I've been lucky in my coaching career and my playing career. I played at Bosco years ago and then went to coach there for a long time. And I was also able to coach at Burton Catholic and, you know, you know when you step in there, sometimes it's almost it's not ordained, but they have that belief that you know it's destined or, or it's, it's their calling. And you know, the biggest thing in an athlete is confidence. 
You know, I'd rather have an overconfident team that I can temper than some people that don't have necessarily the confidence or the belief that, you know, they can get it done. So uh, that is, you know, that's one of the things that they have, you know. And, you know, yeah, it was, you know, going into them, I didn't know really. I mean, other than uh, one club player that my son had played with, um, didn't really know any of them. I I think luckily for me, one of my strengths, I believe, is, is being able to put people in positions that they can succeed. And kind of doing, being able to do it pretty quickly because, you know, I got the job late and we didn't really start practicing until a week later than most programs did. And, you know, having the, you know, I'm still tinkering here and there and I'm probably making mistakes along the way, but uh, so far we've been pretty successful about getting it done. So, yeah. All right, Richie B. I'm going to let you ask a question, but I would prefer if you asked one that uh, would be asking Coach Avery to, preview the upcoming Bergen County final from his perspective. Go ahead, Richie. <laughs> Basically, Uh-oh. tell me what you want to ask him. <laughs> yes, because I, like I feel like you've been on the sidelines of this interview. Not that not that you anything, know anything about Northern Bergen County boys soccer, but go ahead. So, Coach, since you've seen both of us already testify twice this year, um, I'm more interested in how you think Tenafly – we'd be able to exploit Ramapo defensively, especially with kind of fly size up the middle. You see, Jimmy, that's why he's the sidekick. Now, continue, <laughs> Coach. <laughs> well, you know, it's going to be interesting because when I was looking at, <clears throat> you know, the matchup a little bit, um, both of the teams kind of have a sort of similar style where, um, you know, they keep uh, they keep players back. You know, three or four players back, even if you only only have one forward there. I mean, they might come forward a little bit, but, you know, they keep their defensive integrity. They do it in different shapes, you know, different ways of doing it. One plays flat, one plays a little bit, uh, you know, more staggered. But, um, you know, that's one thing that makes Tenafly, you know, dangerous is if they can get you to come out and play against them and then boot one out quick and then hit another one to a nice pass to their forwards. If they get you in one-on-one situations up front, uh, they they pose problems because they're skillful and they're big, and they can you know they can handle you one on one and you know you do that 15 times and you only break two twice but you get two goals that's successful. Um, that being said, I think you know Rampo, you know it does a really good job of keeping their defensive integrity and uh, I think it might be a little harder for them to uh, break through that way again. Uh, so. I think that it's going to be more of a challenge for them. But they do also, if they have, uh, if they can get guys up there to support their runners and they get the ball and not just try and go direct, uh, then I think that will be a little more successful. Yeah, and I think Tenafly is getting healthy uh, too. You know, Andrew Huang, who's their big guy up top, he, he's been battling the shin and the thigh and, and a bunch of different things. And against you, I think was probably the healthiest he's been in a long time. And, you know, he's the one who come up with the late goal. So, yeah, Jimmy, you got another question? Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, right. say, isn't that great? <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, there's two sides to every coin, you know? Jimmy, True. go ahead. Yeah, since we're on the county final kick, uh, you know, we're talking about defensive integrity and and similar styles. I mean, we, we all know uh, the two teams that are in the finals are, you know, 99% of the time two quality sides that, you know, a lot of times mirror each other, especially in this case, I think the game's going to come down to goalkeeping, which it kind of does mostly more times than not in big games, deep into tournaments. Uh, coach, what? who's got, I mean, we don't like to disparage kids, but the quality of goalkeeping, do you, do you see that playing a factor? So we'll let you do it, Steve. <laughs> we don't like to disparage kids, but you go ahead. No, 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 no. I said we, brother, we. That includes yeah. Coach and ourselves, buddy. Um, you know, uh, I'll tell you this. I think they're both quality goalkeepers. Right. Um, and I, I will tell you where I think they, there might be a difference in the game. It could be, you know, uh, a break uh, in Rampo's favor is, um, you know, the long throwing that they have. And, you know, they attack it very well. And we've had a little bit of success with the long throw against uh, uh, Tenafly. And, you know, that's not necessarily just up to the keeper. You know, it's the, the defense or everybody else going up for it and, you know, also winning the second ball. So, um, you know, both keepers, I think, are, are, are fairly equal and, and, and good keepers, obviously. But I think, uh, you know, you might want to look at, like, the defense of uh, the long throw as being possibly a key. You know, if Tenafly can keep Rampo off the scoreboard 
uh, from that weapon, that will be a tremendous check in their corner. You know, if Rampo can exploit it, well, then, you know, they're probably going to have yep. success. All right, let's t- take a quick peek here at the North 1 Group 3 State Sectional Tournament here where you guys are the number one seed. You open up with a home game against Dwight Morrow. Should get tougher after that. You know, you look at the bracket. It's just, you know, and I said it to you, I think, the other day. It, you guys walk off with a tough 4-3. First of all, the last 20 minutes of that second half, your team played as well from the center stripe forward as I've seen in a long time. I mean, you were pressing for that equalizing goal. I understand, you know, you pushing a couple extra numbers up forward, but you just kept hammering away until, I mean, Tenafly could not even clear the ball. You guys kept possession, and it wasn't just banging long balls at the goal. I mean, you were moving it around. You were keeping it moving side to side and all that stuff. So, uh, and I said to you after the game, all right, so you played this well. It, it didn't end the way you wanted it to. But then you guys all get back together and now go play a North 1 Group 3 tournament. You, uh, Pascac Valley, Ramapo, and Tenafly, all four teams in the Bergen County semifinals are all four teams that are in North 1 Group 3. So, you know, how do you do something different? How do you change things up or do you not? How do you approach this state tournament run? Well, I mean, I think you got to continue to play toward your strength, obviously. Um, I was just talking with another coach today. He asked me, you know, he's got a, a, a game coming up and he wanted to know if I had information on someone. And, you know, I, I didn't, but I pointed him someone that he could talk to. And, you know, we were just talking about, you know, scouting people and different things like that. And, you know, one of the things we talked about was, you know, sometimes paralysis by analysis. You know, if you get some detail and, and tell us, you know, every little thing about the other team, and, you know, sometimes your team is like, oh, God, you know, these guys are great, you know. Um right. So, you know, it's important to, you know, to do what you do. And then, you know, I think have a certain bit of information, you know, who's the most dangerous player in the team, you know, what are their general tendencies, you know, do they have a long throw or what do they do on set pieces, um, you know, how they generally tend to play, you know, and then go from there and then emphasize what you do and just let them know the important points without giving too much detail. And then, you know what? sometimes it might change it up. I'm a strong believer that, hey, if we do what we do well, uh, hey, like in tennis play, I thought we'd, we played our game, we just came up on the short end. If we played them again, I don't know that we would do a lot more different, maybe just hopefully be a little tighter defensively uh, in those couple points where we, we got loose. But, you know, um, you know, you train all year to do things certain ways. And, you know, I think if you, if you try and change something so much for an opponent, you know, especially when you're supposed to be, you know, one of the better ones, then you could be right. doing your side a detriment, you know? Yes, absolutely. Richie B., did we cover everything? Yep. I was just making sure you were still awake. Jimmy, did we cover everything? Absolutely, Coach. Congratulations on everything. I hope you keep it going, man. Thanks, Jimmy. Hope to see you soon. Maybe we'll uh, see each other at the restaurant on 17 or something like that one day. Hopefully. He doesn't. He- Richie, and Jimmy doesn't make it out that much anymore, Coach. You know, I think during the Bergen County semifinals, he was at, uh, where were you, Jimmy? Medieval times? Eating chicken with your hands? No, I was painting. <laughs> he was painting. All right. Yeah, retirement sounds like a lot of fun. Trying to make right? some extra bucks. I don't have hey, that fight anymore, so i got to make it up. Yeah, gotta make Steve, it up. Don't ever, don't ever give up that Northern Highlands job. You're gonna wind up painting. You're gonna wind up painting the uh, the horse stalls at medieval oh, times. God, I'm terrible at that. <laughs> Steve Every, the head coach of the Northern Highland Islanders, kind enough to uh, take some time with us here on Hitting the Post. Steve, thanks again for coming on, and best of luck. Hey, guys, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Well, interesting stuff there with IHA head coach Brandon Silva and then with Steve Every there from Northern Highlands. Jimmy, that was good. That was a great breakdown of the upcoming Bergen County final. Yeah, no, and, and, and Coach knows, if anybody knows, Coach knows he's a class act, and He's been in the trenches for a long time. He deserves everything that's coming to him. I did give you the opportunity, though, to uh, really lay on the compliments, but you bailed. I'll be, well, be, you're the contributor, so I wanted you to start your show and, and the questions and figure well, it's only right. It. Yeah, well, I'm a prestigious contributor. But oh, well, it's a big difference, big difference. Yes, yeah, absolutely, difference. big difference. All right, so – I want to wrap up the Bergen County Boys Tournament because I do have, uh, continuing on that trail, I do have some sound. I was at the game, and unlike my two compatriots here, I actually came back with some audio this week. I was not at Medieval Times rooting for the red and 
<laughs> red and yellow? Well, did you get the red and yellow night? Too? Buddy, I was painting. I was trying to make money for my family. Painting. I wasn't at Medieval Times. That was the week before I was at Medieval Times. All right. Well, I want to talk about the a uh, little bit more about the Bergen County semifinals. And, and we were black and white. We weren't red and gold. Get it right. Okay. Did you win? Guy, guy, got, guy got tossed. He was the first jerk to get tossed. <laughs> that always happens to me too. I, I always get the yeah. I, I always they get that somebody, guy. They could have pulled me out of stands. I could have ridden a horse better than that guy. Yeah. <laughs> what they really needed, what they really needed in that position was like a prestigious contributor yes. to make the show worthwhile. Absolutely. All right. So getting back to Tenafly Northern Highlands here, uh, I mentioned it with Steve. I didn't want to go too in depth because you know it happened against him. So I will go into it a little bit more here. Uh, Highlands was down 3-2 late in the second half, and as I mentioned, they pressed up. They played great. Uh, Tenafly could not even clear the ball really at all over the last 20 minutes of regulation. Then you get into the overtime. Tenafly all, all of a sudden gets back on the front foot. They get a rip 17 seconds into the first overtime, and Jace Barak, I believe that's how you – or Barak, however you say his last name, the Northern Highlands goaltender, made one of the best saves I've seen in a long time. Went up to the upper 90, parried the ball over the bar. It was unbelievable. Back and forth it goes until finally late in the second overtime. Uh, short corner, Seth Shachar plays it in, gets it back, sends it across. Andrew Huang, uh, diving header, as I mentioned. Andrew Huang, who's been banged up all year. Two assists. He's their target guy. Two assists and a goal in that county final. And he is the subject that I approached Bill Jager about. Andrew Wang. <laughs> Andrew Wang. You know, Andrew's been hurt, you know, on and off through, throughout the season here and that. Uh, he came back. Our last game played, you know, part of the game there and that. Last year he was the, the leading scorer, I believe, last year for the team. But, you know, he hasn't really been, you know, doing it for us this year. And, obviously, he came in big time today. He came ready to play. I mean, you know, the, the second goal we scored with that little heel pass, that was just, you know, very creative stuff there and that. And then, you know, we talk about trying to get to the back post against these guys here and that. And, you know, we work on that little play where we, we knock it back and try to try to knock it back forward there. And Seth drove a great ball. I mean, you know, and you just got to get on the end of it there and that. I thought we I thought we actually got in the, the first uh, like 10, 15 seconds of the uh, first the two, overtime. We, the we, we were the team made incredible saves. You know, I mean, we came out with a lot of energy. You know, the, the seniors I think carried us here. You know, they Seth, you know, Andrew, Brandon in the back. These these guys stepped up and they really wanted to win this game. You know, you guys absorbed a lot of pressure in the second half until they <laughs> finally, you know, it was water torture almost. You know, it, finally broke. I mean, you. I think you probably heard me on the side. I mean, we we needed to get the ball out, knock a, a couple long balls just so we could get out to the middle of the field, and we weren't able to do that. And really, we're only going to be a matter of time before you make a mistake when you're under that amount of pressure there. And that we needed to get it out, get it down there, and regain control of the middle of the field, which, you know, obviously we didn't do. But then how did you get it back to get a, a shot 13 seconds into overtime, a minute well, into overtime? When we, when, you know, I, I think that, that we, we, you know, when you fall back like that and you're, you're trying to protect the lead, they get out of what they need to do and then they start to panic and then they're not thinking clearly of all the things that we talked about how to prepare for this. So we talked. We said, listen, let's just get ourselves back to things that we were doing well, the things that, that, that got us the goals early on and the things that we talked about, and then we get refocused. And I think that that's what, you know, helps us out. I mean, high school kids, I think sometimes you need to get them and, you, need, you know, you wish you had a timeout like in basketball and say, listen, let's just get focused again. So that's what that's what happened there. Oh, oh, one more, and then I'm just going to get Steve. Penalty kicks against Ridgewood, overtime against Garfield, <laughs> double overtime. You're living on the edge here. We are living on the edge. The cardiac kids, without a doubt, there and that. But, again, I think, you know, that's part of, I think, what senior leadership is about there and that. They just don't want to lose, you know, and that. And I think, you know, again, Andrew step up, Seth stepped up really, you know, big at the end. Brandon in the middle there, Matt Weiss in the middle, our goalkeeper, you know, all seniors, you know, and that. And I think they all had big-time games for us there and that. You get the feeling, Jimmy, that they feel a little magic at Tenafly. It seems like as long as Coach Jake is on the sideline and it's, and they're still alive in the county tournament, there's always a little bit of magic when Coach is coaching on the sidelines for Tenafly. Yes. All right. So, as I mentioned, the last play was off a short corner set up by Seth Shachar. I think that's how you say his name. I'm not really sure. But uh, I talked to him about it, and there was an interesting twist to that last play as well. So here we go. Just before we talk about everything else, the last play, how would you see it all uh, come to fruition? <clears throat> before we had three corners earlier, and I saw Evan, or, we saw a right back or left back open, and I uh, decided to kick it in for a cross, and this time I, I uh, went, went to use him, and I gave him the ball, and he gave it back to me, and I, as he gives the ball, I started cramping up on my right calf, and I take a touch, 
and as they're at a kick, I just feel my my right calf <coughs> cramped up, and I see Andrew running back close. I just kick and went right to his head, and thank God it was over. So it, you could have either been from you could have been laying on the ground getting stretched, and instead you're laying on the ground getting mobbed by everybody else. I mean, that's yeah, it's, a it's, it was one, one play it makes a difference. It was. It was unbelievable. You, you guys absorbed so much pressure late in that second half. I mean, you just couldn't get it clear. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. And then you get a shot 13 seconds into overtime. You know, why, why the switch? Why the change? Uh, because I, I'm sure the plan was not to, hey, let's just play defense for 30 minutes. Uh, we believe in the conditioning. We That's all you work on preseason, during the season, even after games, even after tough games. After today, we're going to go. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to start doing conditioning. We we pride ourselves on how fit we are. And we know we just get the little switch. Coach told us. We just reinforced that we're more fit to them and believed and we were able to take it to them in the last two overtimes. And for as good as last year's team was and as great as that run was and as great as winning the state sectional championship was, they, they, you guys didn't get to the county final last year. I mean, you know, to you know follow up that team and then to even have a chance, well, already surpassing them and a chance to do even more, that's uh, got to be a pretty good feeling. Uh, it's unbelievable. Last year's states and this year's counties, we, we kept it all. A lot of the core from last year, and we just have our younger kids stepping up, and it's unbelievable. County finals. What do you think of that? Uh, I thought it was outstanding. That's good. I'm only a sidekick. <laughs> I can't. I can't say too much. All right, last one I'm going to play from that game is Andrew Wang. Uh, he, he assisted on two goals. He scored the game winner, and here is his thoughts after the game. How, how crazy is is this? Uh, you know. Penalty kicks against Ridgewood, overtime against Garfield, yeah. double overtime against. You guys are living on the edge here, but you know, and you absorbed a ton of pressure in that second half. Just talk right. about you know fighting through that and keep winning. Here. I mean, we want to continue last year's legacy. Unfortunately, last year we got off uh, on the second game of counties, but this year we want to win it. And unfortunately, sometimes we don't click, but we just work until the end. As Coach Rezzo always makes us just run and run and run and during practice. Talk about the goal. What, what, what do you remember about the play, the last one? Uh, I just, all I remember was just Seth getting the ball down the line, him just putting it in back post, and I, I, I just did it naturally. I just went for the ball. I don't even remember why I did it. You, you I just did, did it. Diving header, yeah, yeah, crazy. Diving header, Jimmy. That's a good way to win a game. Hey, listen, I mean, you look at last week's yeah. semifinals. You're talking two games. You're talking a total twelve goals. That's a that's a fun semis. I tell you, I can't tell you the last time. 12 goals were scoring in, in, in the Bergen County uh, semifinals. That's a ton of goals for the semis. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're running late here on the show, so we'll just quickly go. I'll play one round po- uh, interview. And, Jimmy, we've talked about it. The, pro- the great team versus the great program. <clears throat> place like Rampo has had, you know, great strikers every year since yeah. I've started covering them. And you guys got to wait their turn. They got to understand that. And they have to, uh, you know, accept the role. This year, they they carry 27 players on the roster. The guys who don't play themselves play that often, <clears throat> excuse me, call themselves the third half. So you know, they they embrace that role of being supportive of their teammates and you know, all that type of stuff. And one guy who waited his turn, Mark Wallstead. He's a senior now. It's his first year as a starter. I'm, I'm sure he played in some games last year, but in the big ones that I covered, I don't remember him getting that much time on the field. And all he does is come out and score the first two goals of the game. And really it was over right there, 5 nothing win over Pascag Valley. So uh, I asked a couple of questions of Mark Wallstead. Off the bus, um, I was talking to one of our subs, Ethan Bell, and I actually said, Ethan, my goal for this game is to get all, uh, all the third half. And the third half is basically all of our subs that we play. So uh, our win really is a collective effort. I feel like everybody contributed it. How important, you know, especially after that Highlands game, where how important to actually, you know, while you were controlling play early, to put one away and, you know, put them on the back foot a little bit. Yeah, well, obviously the rivalry was huge. Um, watching them just lose the game, it was it was a little upsetting because, I mean, we wanted to get them back, but we were humble. We, uh, like Colin said, we assessed our team, what we did wrong, and we just came back. It motivated us a little bit. I mean, we were winning a lot of games, so maybe uh, we were a little used to it, but I think we did a, a great job coming back on this game. All right, so take me through the first goal. How do you remember the play? First goal. Oh, okay, so... We actually, that was probably, I thought that was one of our better goals, but just not because of my finish, because of the setup. I think we connected like 10, 10 passes from Eddie to, to Charlie, that Charlie out to Noah, then Noah back into me. I think Noah took the shot. It was a rebound, and then I just I was just there for the finish. But, I mean, 
these goals really you see my name but it's really I think it's everyone behind me it's the team that helps me out with it how about you filling this role you know RC last year was so good and, and guys up top I mean that's the way it always goes around I've been covering for 20 years and yeah. there's always the next kid up type of thing but you know you're, you're a specific story to yourself how about you know assuming uh, this role at Rampo, which if you go through the years from Jimmy Toronto when I started this thing to, you know, EJ Alvarado, Elliot Asafo, you know, yeah. how about just being in that, that line? It's amazing. I mean, it's a, it's a tradition here at Rampo. Um, RC is actually a really close friend of mine, so uh, he's actually motivated me last year. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to play last year or the year before that, but uh, I've made this year my best, and I'm proud of it. Give me give me a little thought on the county final now, ten of five oh, Friday well, night in on your home field. Yeah, well, I wanted to play Hans, but I mean, <laughs> Tenafly did a great job, so got to give it to him. I'm really excited. Uh, I'm hoping there's a big crowd. We just got to play exactly how we played. They're, they're a good team, so it's going to be a challenge. It is going to be a challenge. It is going to be a good game. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch, although I would officially, as a prestigious contributor, like to officially lodge my complaint against playing county finals on Friday nights in Franklin Lakes. Uh, Jimmy, can we get that changed, maybe? Yeah. Uh. Uh, no, it's a football, football Friday night. You, should, you know, I'm talking from a media standpoint, not just from NorthJerseySports.com standpoint. I mean, you know, media outlets are stretched thin yeah. on a Friday night. You put the county final in Franklin Lakes at 7 o'clock. The pictures are horrible. It's across the county from the world headquarters of NorthJerseySports.com. How about a little doubleheader on Saturday? Can't Burton do it on County Saturday Boys Final, Burton County Boys Final. State start on Monday. So what? What, what, I, I don't care. Right, so, yeah. sure you can't. Can't. You can't. Absolutely, you can't. Why not? Put you in such a put those two teams at such a disadvantage. Oh my God! They're... Oh, Jimmy, the teams yeah. that are in the yeah. county final are high seeds. Nice they got. I, I mean, they got. You yeah. played the county final. You couldn't have played the next day. I can play the next day. I know but you could have too. You get a day but rest. You. You could. Back in the day, absolutely. The game has evolved. The, the strength of the game, the speed of the game, I, I think it's totally different. I think it's different than it was 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, but, I mean, you, you, have, you have times during the regular season where you play on a Tuesday and you play again on a Thursday. How, how is uh, that different? i got to be honest with you, man. My last two or three years coaching, they, they really – we didn't we, – we had more separation between our games, which made a world of difference in, in the length of our season and the – and the caliber uh, style that we played right a part of our season. When you separate and you spread out games more, it made a huge difference in the latter part of our season. It's tough. I'm not saying you can. You could do whatever you want. You could play three games in a row. It's very, it's very, it's very tough. It's, it's, it's almost saying that, okay, congratulations on making the county finals. Boom, or winning the counties. Awesome. And in two days, and in, 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 in less than 48 hours, you got to turn around and play the first round in the states. I think that man, it's, it's very difficult to do. Very, very difficult to do. Knowing one and done, knowing knowing it's one and done. Richie, I'm going to go back. Very difficult to do. I'm going to go back and look at Jimmy's first round opponents over the years. Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you what. We made the county finals I mean, in 2013. We won the counties in 2013. We would have won seed uh, North Two Group Three. We had the 16th seed in Marstown. We wound up losing the game. Why did we lose the game? I'm going to be honest with you. An injury that happened from the county tournament. Not that Not that if that extra day would have made a huge difference. The kid wouldn't have been healthy. But we ran out of gas the second half, man. Latter part of the season. <laughs> you okay over there? <laughs> I mean... I'm not crying, dude. I'm just being a fact, dude. Ask any coach. Any coach that knows what they're talking about will pay you the same thing, dude. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not that you would know, Corey. Not that you would know, Corey. All right. If you're playing in a county final, ahead, you're yeah. generally a pretty high seed in the States, which means you're generally playing a weaker team. In that case, in Morristown, you kind of got holes because you basically were playing the second strongest team in your section. But normally, you'd be playing a team that you'd be beating, you know, 5 6 nothing. So, Richie, know. group two, group group right. one and two, I agree with you 100 percent, 100 percent with you when you're group one and group two, because those smaller schools usually 10 to 16, mm, unfortunately, you know, but when you're playing a bigger school, I, I don't, I don't think it matters that much. I mean, I think, I think it makes a huge difference. No, I, 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 I actually agree with you on that. I agree with you on that because you look at like the boys' soccer, like some of the brackets. 
Uh, like North Lone Group Four, like the Union City's a two, but Memorial's the fifteen. Memorial fifteen. I know Bergen's. I know Bergen's an eleven who beat a good Garfield team for nothing. So I mean, I, but look at those teams that are in the county finals every year. When was the last time a Group Two? I think we were the last ones in two thousand seven to be a Group Two school in the county finals. And I. So your your yeah, group threes true. and your group fours and your parochials are usually in the county finals, and you usually open it up. It doesn't matter if you're one, two, three, or four seed, but those bigger brackets, those bigger size schools, typically it's not it's not a cakewalk, man. That that first round. In our case, in 2013, wasn't the case. In 2007, it didn't really have an effect on us until we got to the state semis, and you could tell that extra game, that extra two games. The latter part of the season against quality, strong opponents really do take a lot out of your legs, man. I think you two are being a little bit hard on each other. You're throwing each other under the bus, and I'm going to put an end to that right now. I want I want Harmony on the show. The last thing we are going to talk about tonight is predictions. Richie B, Bergen County Tournament Girls Soccer Final. Highlands, 3-1. Jimmy, same question. Jimmy. I'm going I'm going Northern Highlands, one nothing in overtime. All right, and I am going to – well, listen, Brandon Silva picked up the phone. How about an upset? I'm taking IHA 2, Northern Highlands 1. Boys side? I'm going to say Ramapo 2-1, Dylan Rocchio, late goal in the last five minutes to win it. 3-1 Ramapo. Uh, I think it's going to be a wide-open game. I think it's going to be fun to watch, and I'm going to go with 3-2 Ramapo. Uh, we'll see it on Friday night. Against my all of my protestations, the game will be played on Friday night in Franklin Lakes. I will be there to see it, and we will talk about it next week on Hitting the Post. We I will see I you there. Go, man, but I gotta, I gotta Follow the leader.